G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening here in Australia, Bitcoin dominance far out. It is literally just getting lower and lower by the day, it just continues to go down, this is unbelievable. And look, the altcoins are doing really, really well. But look, there is a bit of a worrying sort of sign and we'll get to the charts lately. But look, again, altcoins have been doing well and I mean, look at Doge, this is just seriously unbelievable, <laughs> you know. I'm not going to be surprised if Doge hits a dollar, in all fairness, and I thought there was Buckley's chance of that happening, you know, like last year, I thought, you know, Doge might make it to about sort of 10 or 15 cents, and here we go, wow, unbelievable, but again, it's all, it's based around hype and nothing else, there's no fundamental changes to Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Dogecoin that I'm aware of, so, oh man, I'm just, I'm really worried for some people, and look, in all fairness, in all fairness, sorry, I hope they're right and, you know, they're on to the next biggest thing and they're making the smart moves. But I just, I'd be very careful with Doge. I just, yeah, again, I'm not trying to hate on Doge. I've, you know, bought in twice and sold out and doubled my money both times. But look, I am kicking myself I didn't stay in because this was all before it was even 10 cents. So, yeah, there you go. I could have, I, I shudder to think how much money I could have made if I just had have held that Doge. Them's is the breaks. All right, ETH dominance rising. I mean, look, 3,300 far out. Gas prices still nice and low. You know, not the kind of low that we want, but still low's pretty good. 38, you know, that's way better than the 100, 200, and 300 it's been before. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? What's really pumped? All right, waves. And there we go, Doge, we're just talking about it. Thorchain, OMG, Flow. Ethereum Classic, again, that's got me stumped. I don't know what's going on there. Ethereum, done really nice. Uh, CETH, I don't even know what that is. Yearn Finance, Binance, uh, you know, some great gains there. Now, look, not so much down here, but you'll take gains any day of the week. You know, Maker up 1%, Litecoin under 1%, but here, look, 11%. No one's hating on that. 20% is amazing. 25% is even better. And 59 you know, let's just round up 60%. That is absolutely amazing. So we've seen what's done really well, what's really pumped. Well, let's have a look. Is there anything that hasn't done really well in the last 24 hours? Because there's been some kind of, you know, lower gains there. So has anything got smashed in the last one, in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, right? Nano's down a bit. Neo, Holo. Look, and these... You know, losses will hurt a little bit. But again, if you're still up 15% in seven days, not so bad. But again, is this now, because, you know, you look at that kind of pump and now it's coming down. Is this, a you know, the start of a retracement, a bigger move? Who knows? You know, Aave, V-Chain, there we go. We've had things that have done really, really well. And, you know, eventually people are going to start to take profits. And then there's the panic sellers who go, oh, everyone else is selling, so now's the time I'm going to sell uh, to buy in cheaper later. And, you know, hopefully they're right sometimes, but, you know, at least somewhat infrequently you'll be wrong. And it's when you get it wrong that it can really hurt you. Because you think it's going down, it doesn't, and it just pumps even higher. And then you have to buy in uh, at higher prices. And look, I've, I've made those mistakes and I've learned from those mistakes as well. It's not to say I won't ever do it again. Sometimes you just have to admit that you're wrong and buy it at a higher price. But that really, really hurts. And again, Doge, perfect example. All right, so look, there were some good gains there, but there's some pretty, you know, reasonable size, uh, you know, dips is one way you might say it, or retracements. So, you know, we need to be a little bit careful there. And look, the overall market cap is down. So it hasn't gone up. It's retracing a little bit. How far it's going to retrace, nobody knows. It's still very early in the week. But here's what has me concerned. Bitcoin is now kind of being rejected by the 50-day moving average. So we got above it. Like I said, I was worried that, you know, that we might not be able to get over it. And we did for just momentarily, and now we're under it. So now the 50-day moving average is actually acting as resistance. So I am concerned that this could roll over and then start, you know, a bear, not a bear market, but a bearish kind of trend that people just aren't ready for. Because again, really, this is where we need to break. We need to get above 61 sort of thousand, or we can go down to here, you know, roughly about there. We need, yeah, 61,300. We need to get above that before I turn sort of super bullish. 
But in saying that, Bitcoin could just travel sideways for a while, you know, just keep being kind of volatile between the 100 and the 50 day moving average. But the 100 and the 50 day moving average are getting close. And if they sort of cross over, I think that will force Bitcoin to possibly go lower. So that's what I'm watching out for. That is what I am concerned at the moment. Now, not panic concerned that I'm ready to sell everything. I just think that, you know, there's a definite possibility that we see some more, you know, push to the downside. And again, you know, possibly, I think it's highly unlikely, but maybe we come down to 36,000 and, you know, test the 200 day moving average. We've tested the 50 plenty of times, tested the 100. It's been the first time in a really long time that we've done that. So is it time for Bitcoin to come down and, you know, retest the 200 day moving average? I don't know. I mean, that's going to be a buying opportunity. And for me, this is what I'm looking for. If I see Bitcoin under sort of 41, 42,000, I think that's the buying opportunity there all the way down to around about sort of 41, sorry, 46,000. I think that is, yeah, 46,000 all the way down to 41,000. I think that's where, you know, the really good buying opportunity will likely sort of be. I don't think that it will be able to go much lower. But, you know, again, look, I've been wrong plenty of times before. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't claim to be a clairvoyant. And please never use anything I say as financial advice. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just a guy who likes to get on the internet and talk about crypto. That's literally what I am. If you like my channel, please go ahead, subscribe, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. You can uh, put anything you want down there. Something you want me to cover. Something that you think I can do better or something that's you know I'm not doing very well. But if you're going to kind of tell me I'm not doing very well, at least make a constructive criticism and not just hammering me and telling me I'm shit. <laughs> All right, moving on. So let's get on to some news stories because, again, that's what I'm looking for. Are we going to go lower or, again, can this kind of turn over and hold? Because it's still early in the day, so, you know, this can turn around and turn into a green candle. All right, Spanish healthcare group to accept cryptocurrency payments citing interest in Bitcoin revolution. So uh, this is just going to be the norm. You're going to hear more and more stories like this over the next few years. And this is what makes me think that I don't know if we can really go into a super big bear market anytime soon. I think Bitcoin has to get to, you know, a good couple of hundred thousand dollars for it to have a really decent retracement. Because then as if it just keeps kind of slowly creeping, people are just going to continue to buy all the way up. And then, you know, there won't be as many people dumping it unless, you know, you get the panic sellers. Hopefully most people have done their research and they're just going to hold long term. And that means if, you know, most people are holding long term, Bitcoin can't dump that much. It's not that it can't dump a bit, you know, 20, 30, maybe even 40% retracements. Possible, but we're not going to, I don't think we're going to have those 70, 80% retracements. Uh, again, I, unless Bitcoin goes to 500,000 really, really quickly, then I can easily see us coming back down to, you know, retest 50,000, 100,000 quite easily. And that's, you know, that'll be 70 something percent retracement right there or more. So anyway, moving on. Cryptocurrency regulation is still an ongoing topic for the Spanish government and regulators, with some not too friendly measures against crypto ads or enhancing tax rules. However, adoption is in the, on the rise in different industries and the healthcare sector is joining the frenzy. Everywhere is going to get on the frenzy. I mean, we've got more stories coming up. This literally is going to be the news for the next couple of years. It's just another company is going to do it and another company is going to do it and another big company bought, you know, a billion, a trillion, you know, dollars worth of, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever currency they're really into. That literally, in my opinion, and never financial advice, is what I see playing out for the next probably 12 to 18 months. But that doesn't mean we can't have a bear cycle in there because it might be all the big buys and that happen after there's a fairly decent retracement. That's what, you know, I'm waiting to see. And, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know I'm always, I've got what I hope and sort of think will happen and then what I think will happen if I'm wrong. And again, I generally focus too much on the bearish sort of stuff, but that's me. I'm, you know, a bit of a nervous Nelly. I don't like to be like that, but it generally means I don't get as wrecked as what other people who are just, you know, go at it with reckless abandonment and all the rest of it. But, you know, that's their decision. They're allowed to do whatever they want to do. It's just not for me. I can't do that. You know, some people would say getting into cryptocurrencies was pretty reckless. So, you know, maybe I am a little bit reckless then. 
All right, moving on, Bitstamp. They've had 570% growth in signups. So now they are looking to expand uh, their presence in the US because they're from the EU. So one of the most popular EU-based cryptocurrency exchanges expands its presence in the US following serious growth and interest. And again, I think they'll move on from there. They'll you know move into other places around the world as well. Crypto is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the next, I think, five to 10 years. There's going to be unbelievable growth again i don't know you know how big a bear cycle will be in there i think there'll probably be one but look that super cycle theory is still well in play maybe we see again there will be retracements it's not just going to be all up but maybe we're getting ready to see a five to ten year just unbelievable growth you know who knows time will tell and look if that's the case you know the old hodl method really sort of you know comes to mind if it's going to be five or ten years hodl you know sell bits and pieces here and there five ten percent at a time and diversify if that's what you want to do but yeah interesting times ahead i'm hoping the super cycle theory is the one that's going to come true but if too many people hope for it then it probably won't happen that's generally <laughs> unfortunately the way life is it likes to throw curve curveballs at you so we'll wait and see so again, we were talking about Spanish healthcare getting into cryptos. eBay is now considering adding cryptocurrencies to its retail platform. So you're going to be able to buy things uh, from eBay using cryptocurrencies and that. Now this is according to the company CEO. So I mean, you know, eBay is not as big as what it used to be, but it's still big. I mean, it's a behemoth. A lot of stuff gets sold on eBay, not like sort of Amazon. Amazon really, you know, came and kind of clipped its wings a little bit and all the rest of it but ebay's still pretty big i mean i buy lots of stuff from ebay and look i'd happily spend some cryptocurrencies on ebay but i mean i'm not spending bitcoin and i'm not spending ethereum you know it'd be more kind of the stable coins really and maybe some other you know coin that i'm i'm sort of happy and don't think it's going to be a good uh investment vehicle you know for the rest of my life but really it'd be just more stable coins that i'd use uh on ebay but interesting that they're moving into that space how about this? Grayscale's parent firm, so the people that own Grayscale, so Digital Currency Group, they are going to expand their GP, GBTC buy limit to 500 by 500 million. So the company that owns Grayscale, or is a major investor anyway, the the parent company, they've been buying Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin trust. <laughs> And they originally were only putting in $250 million and now they've upped it by $500 million. So Digital Currency Group, the parent company of digital asset manager Grayscale Investments, is now authorized to purchase up to $750 million worth of shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And again, these are backed by Bitcoin. Grayscale buys that Bitcoin. The company announced on Monday that DCG increased its prior authorization to buy up just $250 million, and they're raising that by $500 million. That's nearly a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. <sighs> Look, what does that tell you about what's happening here? The company that kind of really owns Grayscale, not completely, but you know, one of the major holders, they're buying Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin trust. And again, that's likely going to turn into an ETF in the future when, uh, you know, regulation, further regulation comes in. I mean, if you're not convinced about how big bitcoin's going to become and cryptocurrencies in general i don't know what other news you know that hasn't been you know you either haven't seen on this channel or another channel or just simply read somewhere it is going gangbusters and yeah I, again i would probably think maybe and again i'm taking a random guess here but i know a while ago it was less than two percent of the world was into crypto this is back sort of 2017 so i think now you're probably still lucky if you're pushing five percent of the entire world using cryptocurrencies now i could be completely wrong about that but you know i don't have like every man and his dog talking cryptocurrencies to me at the moment so i know not that many people are using it it's just the odd person here and there but again, once everybody's kind of talking in your ear about it or a lot more people than usual, that's usually an indication that it might be time to take some profits. I'm not saying sell everything. You do you and make your own mind up, but I'd probably be taking profits at that time. I learned that lesson the last time. All right, Accenture and Digital Dollar Foundation to trial United, United States CBDCs this year. So they're already looking to 
get the digital dollar going. So five pilot programs will gather digital uh, data on a digital dollar in the United States over the next 12 months. But they're planning to launch uh, three pilot programs in the next two months. So there is going to be a US digital dollar. I mean, I really thought they would have just run with USDC. It kind of works and, you know, maybe even Tether get it regulated and all the rest of it. But anyway, I understand why they're doing, you know, different pilots because they want to see, you know, what different people come up with. If you just go with the one company, they only know what they know. They don't know anything outside of that. So, yeah, I understand why they're doing it and it is the smart way. But, you know, I would just think something like USDC in the end probably would be the best way to go something that's already there and already done rather than having to start from the ground and build up but that is only if usdc doesn't have any major issues that are identified through uh, other things but so far it's been doing all right and it's uh, regulated as well through circle and all the rest of it and coinbase all right get a load of this imagine the nerve so an employer paid their worker in crypto and then demanded it back when the prices rose. Mate, I would, <laughs> I'd be trading blows if that was me. If I said, hey, I'm happy for you to pay me in crypto, and then it goes you know, to the moon and they say, oh, we want some of that back now, I'd be like, yeah, rightio, you better knuckle up, mate. Because <laughs> I ain't giving that back. I asked for it to be paid in crypto. You didn't offer it, and that's what happens. Now listen to this. According to a letter sent in to Quentin Fortell of Market Watch's The Moneyist, the unnamed employee, known only as Crypto Confused, <laughs> received payment for the contract work in cryptocurrencies in August 2020. So last year, so depending on what he's got paid in, it's probably done really well. Well, it has, it goes on here. Following which the price of the token surged 700%. Whoo, nice. Very nice. Congratulations and well done to this person. He or she deserves every every single you know percent of that for making that decision. But get this: the day the employee wrote the letter, the CEO emailed them demanding that they return the digital assets because they did not generate any revenue for the company and are not currently doing any follow up work. Well, pay them more money if you want them to do follow up work. You don't get to take their. Uh, you know, smart investment returns, you clown, after which they can invoice the company for the hours worked in US dollars, not the current value of the cryptocurrency. The nerve of that company. Like I said, I'd be ready. I'd be like, yep, we're about to, you know, we're about to get ugly, mate. Get your fists up because this is, this is fighting words. <laughs> this is, we're literally getting in the ring or we can do it in the street or wherever. But you don't, you know, get to take it back as it goes to the moon when it was his decision to get paid in cryptocurrencies not that companies oh, the nerve of those people right maker foundation they are almost completely decentralized now and this may actually make them decentralized so maker foundation sends 480 million dollars to make a dow before it fully dissolves so the Maker Foundation has been in charge of decentralizing the Maker Protocol. Now it's handing over the reins and funds to the community, so the DAO. The Maker Foundation, the organized charge with decentralizing the Maker Protocol, today sent 84,000 Maker tokens worth approximately $480 million to Maker DAO. So the, you know, the government's the decentralized version of it. The protocol's users will now decide what to do with this influx. Love it, love it, love it. You know, I had Maker for a while and sold it and I'm kicking myself. I wish I had kept it. I'm really kind of kicking myself for selling any cryptocurrency at the moment. But look, you know, the dollar still reigns supreme for now. So I've got some dollars sitting there, uh, but I'm still investing in cryptocurrencies. Uh, well, actually not quite at the moment, but I have been previously and I will continue to. Because, yeah, I just I think they're the way of the future and I, I don't think we're near the peak just yet. But again, I could be wrong. All right, last but not least, CryptoPunks. Now, the creator has just released MeatBits. So these are NFTs uh, that are now 3D instead of the 2D. Still pixelated and all the rest of it. But it says here, NFT resales have already topped $3 million of the original ones. So Lava Labs, the developer behind CryptoPunks, has introduced a new set of randomly generated NFT avatars called Meatbits. 
Now, where CryptoPunks were pixelated 2D coins, you know, they were just flat screen sort of thing, Meat Bits are 3D avatars rendered in voxels, pixels with volume, hence voxels. Now, they're ag algorith algorithmically generated and attached to NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain. I mean, look, some of those original uh, CryptoPunk NFTs, they sold for $7 million, you know, some of them. I shudder to think what these are going to go for. And yeah, NFT space, it just continues to get bigger. But again, I just, I don't know enough about the art side to buy into them. And that's probably, you know, too bad for me because I've missed out on some amazing gains in NFTs, no doubt. But for me, I'm still happy with the gains that I've made investing in the programs and the platforms themselves. But look, anyway, that's it from me. A bit of news out there. And again, look, just, you know, be careful. Hopefully this turns and it starts to use that 50-day uh, moving average as support. But at the moment, it's starting to look like it actually is a bit of resistance. And, you know, I, I think if it is resistance, if we get the daily close and it's under, we're probably going to come down and retest this 100-day again. Not straight away. We don't just dump, I don't think. But it might go down over a few days. But look, if we dip, if we sort of close under the 100-day moving average then I think this is in play and this may even even be in play. And that's where I'd be really, really, you know, telling people to just hold tight. You know, it's going to hurt and you're going to have to grit your teeth. But I really think, you know, there'd be unbelievable amount of buying pressure down here. Really anything under the 100-day moving average, I think it's going to get snapped up. So even if we do go under the 100-day moving average, I think it's going to take a lot to get here. And if Bitcoin even remotely gets to 46,000 thereabouts, again, it's wicking down here, I'd probably, you know, again, not financial advice, but I'd probably be buying it if you want to be buying Bitcoin. And again, I think, you know, if it does make it down into this green box, it'll get snapped up super hard. I don't think there'd be anywhere near enough selling pressure to push it down to here. Just, yeah, I can't see it happening. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment or there was a little bit of a, a downturn. Hopefully that's all it is, just a very little bit of a downturn. And I'll see you next time.